someone prepared to move the recommendation? Moved to get Merrick and Sin, seconded by uh, Councillor uh, Lennox. Uh, I've got the recommendation, all those do wish to, so I didn't even wish to make got the recommendation. Um, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Got three to clear that carried. Any measures arising from the minutes? Uh, the minutes on the excluded agenda will deal with when we come to the public excluded later on. Any deputations and presentations? I have none. No adjourned business. Recovery projects, COVID-19, they will be coming up in the public excluded agenda under 19.3. Welcome, Mr. Chief Executive. Um, so the first we come to is reports 8.1. So that's on the Waka Kotahi Low Cost um, Risk Program funding. So, come in. It's good to see you. Seem a long way. It's the first time I've heard of this. Careful Council. It's great the new environment, isn't it? It's lovely. Thank you very much. Um, so, my first report is on the Low Cost Low Risk Program funding, which has been endorsed by Waka Kotahi for the next three years, the 2021 to 24 NLTP period. Um, so this report is advising council that um, our bid to Waka Kotahi of $13.2 million has not been endorsed in full. Um, uh, $6.2 million worth of projects have been endorsed, leaving us a short pool of $6.6 .6, million. Um, council share of that funding has been allowed for in our NLTP, uh, sorry, in our LTP, um, which is 49%, which leaves a shortfall of just over $3.3 million. We have done some work looking at options for um, how best to deliver our capital works program and to potentially look at balancing that shortfall. What I'm suggesting at this point is that we proceed with some projects and continue to advocate to what the Kotahi for additional funding on some of the projects. We also have a, a top up to the 50% funding um, endorsement where we have an ability to select one or two small projects to progress with. And the two that I suggested is the Chile Green Footpath um, due to um, the desire for women to improve walking and cycling in Chile Green and also the Townsend Road Culver Extension Project. Um, in the recommendations, I have uh, recommended to Council that they consider proceed with funding of the shortfall in our minor safety area. Um, that area is one where we do a number of high value projects at a relatively low cost. Um, and the funding shortfall there would be $445,000. I have also recommended that we progress with the design only stage of um, uh, projects including Burnside Todd's through the intersection, Oxford Charles Upham, our walking and cycling program, Lees Valley and Island Ahoka intersection. Now the reason for this is that there may well be funding become available over the next three years and we have an opportunity to position ourselves to, to be able to take that funding off quickly if it does become available. Uh, I think that is probably the main points from the report. <coughs> I'm happy to take any further questions as I can have them. Councillor Wall. Thanks, Joanne. Councillor Wall. Oh, thank you, Joanne. Um, just a question for you. You mentioned the Townsend Road culvert, as you'd like to put that further out. Um, do you not find that that's, um, that's quite a, a risk with a, a large amount of traffic that goes down there? It's very, very narrow. and um, wouldn't that, shouldn't that be a high priority, do you think? Yes, so, so I think rather than pushing it out, what I'm saying is that we should do that piece of work with the top-up mm -hmm. that uh, Waka Kotahi have 
um, seed is available. Um, because I do agree, it's an important one for us to pro progress. Yeah. So when you say top up from Waka Katahi, is that out of these 6.7 or 7 million of project money that was there, which there was only what five or six million as I understand allocated, is that right? So within our endorsed program, um, there was just it was just under six million dollars of specific projects which had been approved, and then there was around about nine hundred and sixty thousand dollars which could be used on other projects um, with. With Walker Kotani approval, um, and that allowed council some discretion to progress projects which were of a particular or high importance to council, which is why the Tuahiwi footpath and the Townsend Road, Road Colbert extension are the two that I'm suggesting to council. They give serious consideration to them. So we will, we will attract the subsidy if we put them in the program. So that's contained in. That's contained, in, that's contained in B. Is that what B indicates that the additional budget of 445, 650, is that to do no, those projects? No. So that's for the minor safety. Um, it's included. Sorry. I was a little confused about that, so. Yep, no, that's a very good point. It's actually not clear in the recommendation, so potentially uh, what we could do is add an additional um, recommendation which either approved or what, unless there's uh, further suggestions for alternate projects to be progressed. So yes, it's not so clear. If, if the council was minded not to move B, for instance, because want to put that extra money in there, would that be? defeat the program that you're talking about? Yes, so my recommendation would be that you do progress with B and the reason for that is the minor safety program includes all of our small um, uh, interventions including our school safety program, things like our pedestrian refuges outside schools, levels of footpath, uh, low cost interventions around safety as they occur and the program that gets approved through community boards and you and I each year. Okay. So, so, so the total budget that we had in the minor, well, sorry, in the low cost budget was I think 16, 17 million was it, is that correct? And we total, got um, seven, about seven, about half of that, is that right? So our bid was 13.2 million. And we got we had 6.6 .6 approved, which is a funding shortfall of 6.6. .6. But of that shortfall of 6.6, .6, um, council has already allowed the year share at 49 percent. So it's the Wakatahi 51 percent of that 6.6 .6 million, which is the overall shortfall. As I mentioned, there, there potentially will be opportunities over the next three years to apply for more funding. Um, and certainly that's where we would like to position ourselves to be able to get the best outcome of the council. Okay, so I'll come to other questions, but we need to think of some wording to add in there around the two heavy foot work path and Townsend Road and Culver, is that correct? Yes, that's that's what if, if council was minded to, we could add additional recommendation at the end, which either provided support or not for those two projects continuing from the top up. Mm -hmm. My apologies, that list should have been included as well. So it's two heavy footpath and Townsend Road Calvert. So uh, what were the so supports two heavy footpath and Townsend Road Colbert being include being included in the what program is that? Just remind me. Um, what we could say is uh, it council supports the uh, progressing discussions with Walker Kotahi on progressing to a heavy footpath and Townsend Road extension projects subject to your approval. You got that, Adrian? It's 1.110 before you get to the recommendations. It's yeah. a summary. Yeah, that's right. So it's subject to 
council has a share of those two projects already. Okay, so we, that could be a potential eye if we're minded to. Okay, further questions, so Kirsten? I mean, um, um, Joanne, just looking, just looking at D and E, we've got funding of the Oxford Road Charles Upham Drive roundabout that's been progressed at the design stage, and yet we've got the Plaskett Road, Johns Road intersection, safety improvements not included. Wouldn't there be more chance of serious death or injury on some of these rural intersections with faster speeds than there is on a residential area which is only at a 50 kilometre? And why has that priority been given to a, a low-risk environment rather than a high-risk environment? Um, I wouldn't say Oxford Charles um, is a low-risk environment. It's a busy road and it, um, we still currently have a dispute coming in from the town uh, into that area at a reasonable speed. We are obviously looking at reducing the speed through that area. Um, we have put the active warning signs in at Plaskett Strong, so that is to help with the avenue effect. Um, it's not saying we won't ever progress with this, I think it's more just noting that it's one that we could potentially push out so the three years and then apply again through the NLTP for funding in the next three year period. There's something true to that. What, what, what's the time frame for getting around about at the Lehman's Road, John's uh, Oxford Road corner, which would then progressively slow traffic in to reduce that traffic going forward? I'm just wondering, are we putting our eggs in the right basket? Yeah, yeah, and that's a really good question. Um, I don't have the timing right in front of me, but it is within the LTP, and from memory, it was about five to six years out. So. Um, Lehman's John's uh, Road intersection, uh, putting around about there. So, yes, it is included in our L in LTP. Um, part of the consultation we said that we've just been looking at with speed limits, and we'll be coming to the community boards and council with over the next month is do we actually look at how we push those speed limits out? Um, so, bringing that feedback as part of the consultation back to council. Uh, further questions to Councillor Stewart? Is Councillor Stewart going to name the plates on here or is that this thing? Just helps me. <laughs> Two months on the only answer. No, it's been No, it's not. I've lost your name. I've lost me. Um, I, I just a question. Hold that for me. It is. Um, uh, excuse me. Why are we um, having to reconsider this? Is there some criteria that what the Kadahi. Um, is now re-evaluating really all these programs because it's the first time I've called this. <coughs> yeah, that's a good question, and it's, um, mm -hmm. I think Walker Kotahi has signalled uh, early on that um, low, the low cost, low risk uh, area funding, particularly, um, was one that was going to be pretty highly contended. Um, this in our TP, and I think there's been a number of reasons that impacts on that, including COVID um, and income from, I guess, during COVID lockdown times, from things like the petrol excise tax has not been coming in um, as it was. So, the, but I think there's also been a drive to potentially fund other areas um, more, the road to zero. Uh, category and also things like PT infrastructure um, rather than focusing on some of these other areas of problem. So I think it's very much a reflection of where we are at the moment. I'm not sure whether Jim, you have anything more to add in that space? Or I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> not my fault. Any further questions, Councillor Williams? Yes. Um, so Walker Kaki is meant to be the experts on it and they've stopped the funding in this area. Is that maybe because they exactly what you were saying that they believe we need to spend money in different parts of our roading rather than some of these bits and pieces? I think it just reflects um, potentially the area challenges that people with funding around COVID 
um, but also a, a, a change in focus. Um, things like the road to zero area um, through the GPS is an area that they wanted to, the government has wanted to, in, uh, I guess, concentrate or increase um, funding into that area. And there is um, a national director in terms of where they want that So, second question on this is. So if we set a precedent of um, actually uh, funding the um, land transport um, share of it, that sets a precedent for that. And are they likely to look at the next funding rounds and think, well, why make the Rural Council going to fund that themselves if we don't need to? Is there any potential of that thought going into their process? I don't think they're particularly looking at one council or another or what they will or won't fund. Um, I think this is more being driven at a national level in terms of where um, government wants to see uh, transport investment to achieve the, the objectives of the GPS uh, government policy statement. So, that means all councils got cut um, the same amount on this um, low risk and mine safety budget. Um, not all got 50%, but quite a number of them. I know uh, Sal and I think we're sitting in a very similar situation to what it says for the fact of the attribution. So I don't, I think as a region, um, my understanding is that the funding was around this sort of level. I, I'm not aware of anyone who got fully funded in the local service program. Um. It's kind of a similar line. A little worry, and I just wonder, you talk about um, COVID, you talk about not enough funding because the cows are getting off the road, you talked about uh, a change to what they're doing. So, why would we put any future programs in there hoping we would get funding? These changes that you've just mentioned to us. Why you are not going away. So why would we even consider putting these in here and not going with it with a totally separate secret program next year? Because the indication, if I read you right, that you've just given me that there isn't any funding, and because of the situations you just said, there won't be. So why would we do that? Sorry, I'm not really sure of uh, I guess the question, but we, when we put our program forward, we try and I guess pitch our projects in terms of um, trying to tick the box in terms of whether they are road to zero or a PT uh, type project and um, put the information evidence that we have for those projects forward to Wokokotahi as part of our bid. Um, there's always an opportunity for us to um, is do more work and try and make sure we're pitching that correctly and at the right level. Um, but the reality is there will always be some projects that have a higher priority and it may not be that we are providing, um, I guess, enough emissions reduction as an example or enough mode shift to be able to attract the funding. That's just the way it is <coughs> this year. Um, and whether council decides to put forward all of these projects um, in the future, I think it would be something we need to work with the council as to how they wanted us to uh, put some of these projects. Well, uh, there's a couple of things around that. I don't know if it's worthwhile we'll having the workshop on this stuff or whether it's just whether we're just going to do it. some real complications in this that I see, and particularly around the questions that Councillor Williams has just asked. Um, this is just put in front of us today without a workshop. Um, and I'm just, I'm a bit, I'm a bit confused about the whole thing. I can't see from the... I can, I can see the questions that are coming from well, colleagues on this, and I, I similarly have some similar concerns, so perhaps it might be... Joanne, is there anything, if we were to progress this by workshop and find a slide, is there anything preventing that, that would be putting this at risk in the interim? That's a good question. Okay. So the one, I guess, thing that I um, will have recommended is that we carry on with our minor improvements program for this 
financial year my safety program and the reason for that being we already have an approved program which has been agreed with you and I and that um, had uh, I guess some important projects that we were um, progressing and that includes things like the pedestrian facilities outside Tamata Urdu School um, so for us uh, overall and I guess um, that's something that we've worked with the school for, so trying to produce those lower cost well, improvements. Perhaps we just have a pause for a moment, and maybe yourself, the Chief Executive, and I could just have a wee conference. Um, and uh, if we just have a brief agenda, and we'll just discuss a way forward. That would be right for members, so yep. back in about five or ten minutes.
we would have one, so we got two here at the
from Jared, who was due to present this report. So this relates to our current financial year, 2021-22 Capital Works Programme. Uh, so it's a report that we do not like bringing to council, as it does signal that we have a number of projects um, in three waters and also solid waste that won't be delivered in the 21-22 financial year. Uh, so those projects are, as set out under recommendation B, um, these are the projects that will definitely be carryovers, so that's the Ashley Street um, pipe upgrade to drainage project, school roads drainage upgrade to Woodland, and that relates to, also to the box drain improvement works also in Woodland, and a wastewater project being our septage facility. Uh, so we have, we no longer have any dedicated internal resources to work on these projects. Uh, there's also a range of projects under recommendation C um, that will be progress this financial year but are at risk of um, not being completed and will be uh, will likely be carryovers. So that is um, South Rock Pond C access, Beswick stormwater pump station modifications, Combs Road drain upgrade, and there are some sort of waste projects being the um, South Brock Resource Recovery Park Disposal Pit Upgrade, Minor Improvement Works, and the Oxford Transfer Station and Pit Wall Alterations. And you'll note in item 4.1 of the report on page 63 that there are a number of projects that we have packaged up and put out to a consultant externally. So that is the design of the York Street drainage diversion um, and then some uh, MSQA which is the construction monitoring for three projects bringing the central Rangiora stage five, that's the one coming up King Street past the school and towards Dudley Park, Woody Road Rising Main and Wilkshire Court to Green Street stormwater upgrade project. Um, there are also a number of projects that are listed in um, 4.2 that uh, we are still intending to deliver, but they are dependent on uh, us being successful with recruitment that we have underway at the moment. Uh, the final thing just to note is that as part of our annual plan commentaries, we will be uh, covering off the implica implications of this in terms of our 22-23 um, Capital Works program to make sure that we're in a position to deliver next year's Capital Works program. Thank you. Have you questions? Do you want to add anything, Kelly? Okay. Okay. Questions? Councillor Williams? Yeah, the wastewater sector. Um, that was meant to be uh, a money making scheme for the council as well. Is that, is that with progressing with um, um, other means of, um, of the unit which would cover the cost? And um, um, I understand it was sort of a, a reasonable um, uh, amount of money the council could actually make on it, but it wasn't going to be a, a cost cost for the council. Uh, yes, that is correct. So um, there has been a lot of work put into that and it does pay for itself. It's got about a seven year um, return on investment for that septage disposal facility. Uh, where we hope to get to this financial year is purchasing the unit um, and getting it into the country. It has quite a long lead time in about 26 weeks, so half a year. Uh, but we will not complete the civil works this financial year and have it operational. So that is a project that um, we will make some progress on in terms of purchasing the unit, but it won't be completed. So what is the delay so far in purchasing that um, set up for it then? At the month? That was, I understand, passed quite a few months ago, if not 12 months ago. Oops. Apologies for that. Um, yeah, so we've uh, been having a look at other setups around the country. Our preferred uh, device that we are looking at purchasing, um, there is no other similar 
installation in New Zealand. So we are just going through our due diligence to make sure that the device that we're committing to is the best solution. Any further questions? Sorry. Any further questions? So we've got a recommendation. We need to move. Councillor Redmond, uh, seconded by Councillor Ryan. Do you wish to speak, Councillor Redmond? Um, just to say that it is disappointing, I suppose, in some respects that we do have to carry over some projects, but I understand, I suspect there is a resourcing issue, and um, that's something beyond our control. So I'm aware staff are probably under pressure to deliver, hopefully, as much as they can. So I think we need to support this. Councillor Brown, any further speakers? I've got the recommendation, although the mission wish to exercise right to reply on yourself, Councillor. I've got the recommendation, all those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary, clear that carry. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, we now come to 8.4 representation review of that arrangements, governance manager Sarah. Yeah, it's just different. And then four. It's different on the summary of Jesus, that's why. So. 
so, yeah. the new um, I and everything gets shuffled down one. Okay. So, so it is just making that you change the Rangiora Ashley Ward the standalone recommendation. Yeah. All the ones I yeah yeah on that, and it and it just adds the words at the end. For um, reasons of fair representation across the Rangiora Ashley. So that's the only change. Is that yes. everyone clear on that? Yeah. yeah. Therefore, we are spelling out the reasons for our change. And that is the, the only proposed change um, to the current representation arrangement based on all the feedback that we have uh, received and working through the process. Okay, thank you. Any questions? Of, sorry, do you have anything else you wish to add? Uh, no, after today we will place an advertisement in the local paper and the press advising of today's decision. That will be out for a month for appeal, and any appeals then go to the local government commission. Should there be any appeals, the local government commission will hear those and make a determination probably in March. Certainly has to be by about the 10th of April next year, which will finalise the arrangements for next year's elections. Okay. Any questions? We've got the recommendation. I'm happy to move. Second, 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 second councillor, second. second. So, um, just in uh, moving, just to look, I think Sarah um, followed a really good process on this. It's clear that past work has actually contributed well. There's been a lot of work that's got, that gone on in the past to make sure that our representations were have us well placed and in the end this came down to for the regulation community board simply around the population uh, there ultimately with the change there was a conversation with members of the board there was a board representative as part of the um, working party so I think we have and we've been out to the public and um, so we've, we've got a fair view back um, from that and as you say this now by approving this today it follows the process of its own um, uh, with appeal uh, rights etc in the next period of time so um, I just commend you and Emma and other staff and also the working party for their role in shaping this to where we've got to today. Thank you. That's fine. Yes, thank you very much for going through a thorough process and I know the harder one was the one before this where we had to make the changes because change is always quite difficult. Um, I'm glad that we've managed to re remain within the parameters that were set in the previous round. However, I do want to just put a word of caution. We can see that our district is becoming more urban, um, but we are still a very urban district. We have a very, very large rural area, so it's going to become increasingly important um, that those members in our community boards are very aware of the rural sections of their wards. Um, we're seeing this with larger voices being heard from the towns. Um, it is a bit difficult sometimes to get the rural voices through. Um, and I still think it's really, really important that we look after the rural part of our district. However, having said that, I understand that it's based on population rather than area, and that is the fact that we have a through the electoral commission. Um, so that was just my only one word of caution going forward to the new community boards, is that they, they remember that um, some of our district doesn't actually have sewer, water, rubbish, and facilities outside the atmosphere. Thank you. Any further comments? Respond to some of the recommendation, all those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, clear that carry. Thanks, Sarah. Um, our next paper, um, we're advised late that Simon can't be here with us. Um, so, thank you. Um, thanks, Ray. So, we've got there's, there's no start to the coming either, is there? Is there, but we haven't got a staff member here to present this report, but is there any major items members have, otherwise we can lay it on the table if we need to until next meeting, but it seemed fairly straightforward yeah. to me. Is that how the rest are reading that? Yeah, it is. Yeah. So I think we're okay with that. So
So, um, any questions? You'd like to move, Councillor Murphy? Yeah, yeah. Second, I've got to show many hands up at once. Councillor Williams. Yeah. Um, Thank you, Mr. Media. It's pretty self-explanatory and, and uh, almost just procedural. The uh, permission for the, um, the deed to be um, altered was given by council and approved by um, the Runanga in, in, in due course. And um, this opens the door for the for uh, to do uh, to proceed down the path of investigating seriously the. Um, financial advantages of, of, um, of, its, of the land it owns. Thank you. Councillor the speakers, Councillor the speakers, do I do exercise of right and client, Councillor Speaker? See, I'm offering it. Thank you very much. Right. I'll put the recommendation, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Contrary to fear that carry them. Sorry about the feedback on the microphones, but we're just bearing in the interim, there is a new system coming in the not too distant future, which hopefully will resolve the feedback issues we've received. Okay, um, come to item nine. There's no items referred uh, from committees and community boards. Number ten, Mr. Harland, uh, which is on wellbeing, health, and safety report. I um, take the report as read. I think the key point is that there haven't been any notifiable instances, so um, I'll take questions, Your Worship. Any questions, Councillor Williams? Yeah. Um, a while ago, um, I brought up that some of our contractor um, incidents should be reported on this. Obviously, they're not being reported. Um, are they going to be? And I'll go for Tacti to the one that the big cyclone truck had an accident the other the week. Um, I hit the lamp post for that um, truck, what have you. Um, are we going to get the contractors? Um, reports. Um, we are working on a system to bring those to you, so in the future that's the intention. Okay, um, any further questions? We've got a recommendation, you're prepared to move, Councillor Williams, seconded by Councillor Atkinson. Do you wish to speak? Do you wish to speak, Councillor Atkinson? Any further speakers? We'll put the recommendation, all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Contrary to fear that carries. Um, Committee minutes for information. Uh, so, if someone uh, uh, move to item 11.1 to 11.7 be received, Councillor Redmond looks really keen on that, so does Councillor Bryan. So, they moved and seconded, I hope. Um, any discussion? All those in favour, please say aye. Contrary to you, that carry. Then we've got a series of uh, item 12. Uh, community board uh, minutes for information, 12.1 to 124 Councillor Mealings is moving that, seconded by Councillor Ward. Is there anything you wish to speak to say? <laughs> Councillor Ward? Any further speakers? I've got that. All those in favour, please say aye. Contrary, clear that carried. There's no correspondence. Uh, item 14 is um, the Mayor's Diary. Um, Someone prepared to move? Moved by Councillor Atkinson, seconded by Councillor Ward. Wish to speak? Okay, I've got that. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Contrary, declare that carried. So, this come to Council Portfolio Updates and just remind members that it's um, three minutes, up to three minutes for each. Um, the CEO's got a ca uh, stopwatch there, she's got to start with me. Um, <laughs> Uh, May, just to say on the other iwi relationships, May and Tahi, we did a uh, workshop this past meeting. Uh, we presented on um, sort of our council's view on the Three Waters subject, and uh, we had uh, a range of questions from uh, our representatives, but it's pretty much the main uh, items that were raised there. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions if there are. Greater Christchurch Partnership, um, just um, we talked around the, uh, we had a workshop out at Lincoln which uh, all members were invited along to, which was talking around uh, effectively the start of the spatial planning work, which is really important. And uh, we, we started 
to see some draft of some maps indicating where growth could go. It could be the start of a very interesting conversation um, going forward around um, the appropriateness or otherwise of, uh, of where development should go. We, of course, are ambitious for our district um, and there'll be an opportunity for members to feed into that as we uh, continue this work over the next um, 12 months. The Greater Christchurch 2050 work, which is um, talking about our ambitions for the next 30 years, uh, is getting to a point of conclusion. So it's just finalising that document at the moment. And the last meeting of the partnership was the agreement on the Urban Growth Partnership, which critically uh, will bring in two cabinet ministers to our process. Uh, Ministers Mahuta, which will be an interesting conversation on other matters, uh, and um, the Minister of Housing. Um, one thing that's happened in the last month, of course, is the um, well, some announcement, I guess it would be, on the um, um, urban growth um, NPS uh, National Policy Statement on Urban Growth. So, as you know, we've got a workshop on that uh, next week to talk about the implications of that and how this could be. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, Canterbury Water Management Strategy, Council Stewart. Thank you. Um, as I mentioned earlier this morning, um, PC7 um, will be considered by uh, an extraordinary meeting of ECAN on November the 17th, and, but the agenda which contains the um, the plan change it will be publicly available on November the 11th. I mean, this has, as you, we all know, real significance for the farming and um, environment in Waikariri. Um, I'm disappointed personally that this council did not see fit to make a submission on uh, natural wetlands and the uh, definition and provisions uh, to MFE, which is part of the um, clarification of the MPS Fresh Water from last year. ECAN and Naitahu have both um, submitted. Uh, I thought we did, there didn't seem to be an appetite from staff to um, respond to it. Uh, I thought in the very least we could have supported ECAN's submission and or Naitahu's, but certainly leaving a gap doesn't sit well with me at all because it is of huge significance to protecting the wetlands we have here. Um, I did want to, um, there is quite, and, and I mentioned it this morning, um, under the CWMS which is really um, nothing but a, a paper document in the sense that there is real frustration um, within the Zone Committee about what is their role now. Um, they meet two monthly, now they have 50000 to allocate for a year. Um, they're working, um, this year they're including um, a Inanga sporting project in the Taranaki and also earmarked potentially um, 20 grand or so towards the Spark Northbrook track and corridor uh, that has been developed up and internally there is some um, support. Um, I would like to um, also show you this which it was, this is the Ashley River um, projects from ECAN which appeared on the zone um, table as they do, just drop it down, um, yesterday. And to great consternation from the Zone Committee, they had, had never seen it before, no um, public involvement. There is also the um, Rangiora Reach Master Plan that is uh, as a result of the uh, vegetation clearance that caused a lot of hoo-ha. Um, this is how it's been presented and the Committee, the committee did um, voice its concern that this is the first time they'd seen anything like this. Got projects on they don't know nothing about, um, and really questioned what on earth um, ETM was doing and dropping this stuff like that. Um, and I would um, endorse concerns. 
Um, I also uh, attended, as your representative, the Ashiwakahuri Rating District mm -hmm. Annual Meeting. You're at three and a half minutes. I'll, so just, I'll just wrap it up. Yeah, Thank you. Well, as you know, um, the, in the recent flood, there was 1,500 QMEX at Cones Road, and we were in difficulties. The stop rating system in 2003 was recommended um, to move to a design level of 3,000 QMEX with 600 millimetres of freeboard. Nothing has happened, and ECAN at the meeting acknowledged that at 1,500 QMEX there was real danger. In fact, we evacuated at that level. Um, if, if the stop meets at the moment, designed for 2,400 QMEX, if it had got anywhere near that, they would have burst. It would have been in ring Europe. Um, ECAN is now undertaking a review of what is the level of risk that a community is willing to, um, to uh, um, work with. Um, it would have been carnage to quote Ekan had there been a two thousand two and a half thousand cubic flood through there. Um, the stopbacks wouldn't have held up, uh, and the recommendation is that going back to even two thousand and nine, that uh, the stopbacks should be increased to three thousand two hundred and fifty, and perhaps even four thousand four and a half thousand. So. We need to get involved in this as a council because this is happening at ECAN and we don't have any input into it at this moment. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Stewart. Can I just say on the first point you raised around the submission of uh, the Chief Executive to follow up what happened there because I certainly wasn't aware that if any other member was, but um, yes, as a matter of course, we should, well, it should be. We should be submitting on things generally yeah. or it should come to elected members for our views. So, I don't know what's occurred there, so we'll follow that up. The other is, yes, the um, Chief Executive and I have been involved in some early conversations and there are brief to hear um, around some of that work that he can look into on the stock banks, but they've engaged a gentleman called uh, Basil Chamberlain to come in and, and undertake some of that work, but there will be there will be there will be need to come here and have further conversation and briefings with the council because it's a serious issue. And um, you can have put a um, I know they're putting in a, a case to government to assist with the funding of that because it's critical. The engineer that gave the talk was a guy called Matt Sermon, who was doing the Ashley scheme review. So I don't know how he I don't know who he I don't know who he but we will follow that, but there should be a briefing here from oh, colleagues. Indeed, Absolutely. Yeah. It's very important, I agree. Yeah, okay, so. thank you. So, international relationships, do you American, sir? No. Okay, what about your um, working party? How are they getting on that? We're, we're just where we were the last time, waiting, waiting, waiting. So, I'm going to have some results next time. Very patient in your waiting. Mm. All right. Um, Regen, um, Councillor Blakey. Thank you. Not a lot to report. There's a few things floating around in the wind. We've had four applicants come to us to discuss um, purchasing land in the, in the um, Regen area. Staff are, are uh, working through that at the moment. Um, the only thing in concrete to report is um, the progress of WOW on the uh, Courtney Lake Bouncy Castle project. That is all go. The thing has arrived from China, it's got as far as Hamilton on its way south. Um, they are aiming to open on the 25th of um, this month. Um, that is a deliberate ploy to get in a week before Prom will open their one <laughs> so they can ride on their publicity. Um, and um, the resource consents are through from us and from ECAN, so the, the project is all go. So the consents have been granted. Consents have been granted. License to occupy is still with press being finalised. Both consents are through here. Okay. Um, questions of council. Further questions of council. Thanks, Al. Uh, climate change and sustainability. Council meetings. Um, just a few quick points. Um, the annual report on the 2021 organisational sustainability plan implementation will be coming to audit and risk on the 16th of November. So you'll hear about that. I'm not sure.
sure who's going to be presenting it. <laughs> but, um, and the regional climate change risk assessment documents currently being finalized, and as well as that um, we are progressing some work to provide a set of climate change scenarios for our district that as far as possible will reflect the recently updated IPCC projections. And also they are um, establishing a district level emissions profile, which shall be interesting to see how that comes out. But, um, as you all are all aware, as we speak, COP26 is going on in Glasgow, so we'll see what comes out of that. Um, I won't hold my breath. Uh, and as far as on a more local level, uh, if you look out the window there, there is a Flamingo e-scooter parking lot, which is kind of exciting, I guess. So we've launched that from um, yesterday. And um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Thanks, Nikki. Thanks, Nikki. Any questions? Uh, Councillor Williams? If you could uh, invite... You can use your microphone. Oh, I didn't really want to. Uh, if you could invite from James Shaw to Glasgow. <laughs> I would have turned it down because I didn't invite Yeah, there's a thing called Zoom. <laughs> All right. Okay, thanks, Nikki. Um, and um, I don't know if any of you have had a go on the scooters yet, but see me where they can go on the trial, and they're actually a little fun bunch to get your balance right. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, so it's worth, 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 worth a try if you mind it. Um, uh, thanks to the working party led by um, Councillor Atkinson and others that have considered it wasn't better to get it to where it is today. Okay, 15.7 uh, business promotion in town centres, Councillor Ward. Thank you, I've got quite a lot to say today. So. Um, just upon the promotions. Within three minutes. Well, we'll see. Um, <laughs> it uh, will be. <laughs> promo don't stop me now. Don't start me. Promotions um, uh, have been greatly affected by the COVID. The um, celebration that's been cancelled in the Europe. The business awards have been cancelled. Um, and well, we're hoping to still have a Christmas parade in the Europe, but um, we'll, we'll have to see. But on the town centres. Um, sorry? Today. Oh, there we go. I've been in the meeting. What was that? Sorry. Five percent price. Both Oh, there we go. So thank you. <laughs> E-scooters, of course, are now available across the district for public to use. Um, so um, around um, the six-month trial will run through until the end of April, at which council will consider how public e-scooter services might look into the future. Staff will work with Flamingo over the course of the trial to monitor use and behaviour. As part of the trial, Council received ongoing data relating to how the scooters are being used in the district. EV charging stations, electric vehicle charging stations are now up and running in both Flamingo and Clarkwood town centres. Planning for the implementation of Woodland and Oxford charging stations is now one. Excuse, excuse me, uh, maybe just take it out of the chamber if, yeah. um, because uh, it's just difficult to get counsel. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Not your fault. Not should, your, it's not your fault, Jane. And should occur over the coming month or two. The, the change in location at Oxford has been successfully negotiated with Meridian Energy after further feedback from the Oxford I Hope Board was received. The Oxford charges now will be located at the Pearson Park car park rather than the Town Hall car park. New Zealand Motor Caravan Association have now been granted resource consent for their proposed motor caravan park at the Kaipoi East Mixed Use Business Regeneration Area. The final lease agreement arrangements should also be concluded over the next couple of weeks. Some delays to this project were incurred as a result of ongoing COVID interruptions over the last year, but the NZMCA are now in the process of finalising the site works arrangements. The current project plan has ended the MCA contractors commencing work outside on site this side of Christmas and being ready to receive guests by the end of March. So um, they will receive up to 150 caravans at any one time. The Kaipoi South Mixed Use Business Area de Development Proposal Staff have agreed and finalised finer details with a memorable understanding with the preferred proponent and both council and preferred proponent have begun undertaking the further investigation tasks related to this proposal. 
This includes an initial meeting with ECAN engineers and regulatory staff, and a similar meeting with Waimakariri District Council engineers and regulatory staff. There are a number of feasibility, viability, and consensibility tasks to be undertaken by the next six months. Staff will update Council as appropriate with regards to the ongoing progress of this project, and the current schedule will see the report coming back to Council August, September 2022 with recommendations as to whether Council should proceed to the further stage of a formal development agreement. An initial public communication about this project is currently being developed by the Council's communications team is likely to go out next week, beginning the 8th of November. Um, Rangira Town Centre for Harking. Half a minute, Joe. Um, still the process of preparing information to the upcoming annual plan, so I won't say more. Kalakoi parking restrictions. Um, have been undertaken. This review has resulted in a number of small recommended changes to parking restrictions time in some areas. So I won't go into that. Bank in New Zealand site. Simon H and Rob H will be providing a quick briefing to Council regarding the site of Rangit the Council's next briefing next Tuesday. Freemasons have recently advised their desire to consider an alternative option to the one previously discussed. And so, but this does not um, necessarily prevent the opportunity of, of, of us wanting to enable access through Peaceful Street to the Council's public car park. And locally, thus but not least, local economic development strategy staff have begun refining project brief and scope and undertaking initial research for the upcoming local e economic development strategy review and refresh. 50,000 K has been included in the current financial year for this project. And staff see the strategy as being an opportunity to shape and guide council enterprise with Canterbury economic development activities for the foreseeable future. Staff will be engaging with the Audit and Risk Committee over the coming months as planning for this project continues. Thank you, Jane. Any questions? I'd just like to say that with that news around the Centre Parade, something that's really sad. Oh, I suspect Oxford will follow suit because the president of Oxford Lions called me the other day to find out what was going on. So I'll pass that on to him, but I know our community will be really disappointed. Uh, certainly a highlight for all of us, those of us that still believe in Father Christmas, um, and love the parades. So, but I certainly understand That's the position of the Promotions Associations are in, but it's really sad because it's uh, something we all look forward to. But the Christmas tree festival is going ahead. Don't know. That's what we've been told. Well, I got a text earlier, and I'm not sure about that. They are looking for some guidance from us before we, um, so I've got, I just haven't had a chance to follow it up today yet. I hope it is, Kirst, I really do. <laughs> okay. Um, any questions of, can you questions of Councillor Ward? Um, Councilor? Can I just say, Elaine, I'm happy to forward you that email. Thank uh, you. So that it will help you seeing as I talk so quickly. Thank you. Um, Councillor Reckons? I just wondered, Councillor Ward or whoever, Provided the information, is Pegasus by the lake still happening, or is that likely to be called off as well? It's a Christmas event. It's a separate event. I guess they'll have to take their own. That, that, um, that doesn't come, hasn't come under Might need to let Father Christmas know. Who then the Father Christmas is in that uh, uh, parade, Councillor Redmond? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, we have no question. I have no questions. Um, no agent general business. We now move to uh, matters to be considered with the public excluded. There's a recommendation. Someone need to move. Yeah, we move. Moved by Councillor Atkins and seconded by Councillor Ward. I put the recommendation. All those in favour, say aye. Contrary, declare that 